it's not my choice when it comes to cannabis because I am not a cannabis person. I smoke because I want to. No, we are not doing that. My mom sees drugs specifically um, in one hand and then handcuffs in the other. We, the new young generation, want to change our region. Legalization should be the first step. We don't understand it. Where will they be grown? Who will benefit? Who will buy our crops? Unlike the older generation, who rejected legalization and lived excluded in poverty in the Reef Mountains. Since 1956, you were asleep and were paying for it now. We weren't asleep. Y'all betrayed me. Can I say something? No, non stop. Yes. That's why y'all should have stayed why within we my perimeter. Instead that's of going. That's why we smoked weed, is what I'm trying to tell you. Thank you. Kids, cannabis, and parents. Of course, there's going to be conflict. Young and old. Our realities and dreams can be so different. Seriously, it seems like there's a huge gap between the generations. Sometimes we just don't get each other. The question is, can we fix it? The government is trying to prohibit the illegal use of legalized marijuana. Under the new legislation, license holders will be required to submit a monthly cannabis report to the agency. Sounds like the state is officially starting its cannabis legalization project. It's difficult to implement now, especially since people still don't understand why they legalized it. What are the objectives, its consequences, and the fears? It hasn't been easy to get here, but we have to keep going. Don't forget, we were criticized in the beginning. People didn't accept the idea at all. Legalization is here, but we don't know how it'll be implemented. We don't understand it. It wasn't easy, my friend. People criticize us. They still don't agree. They see us as troublemakers, like we don't belong. If legalization had been proposed back then, the older generation wouldn't have even considered it. For that generation, the plant is sacred, and no kind of legalization is acceptable. It should all remain illegal. My father, like the rest of his generation, was against legalization. They're a mistrustful generation. Will the state itself supply the seeds? With local or foreign seeds? Where will they be grown? Who will benefit? Who will buy our crops? Do we send them to the laboratory, the factory, the co-op or the regulatory agency? We still don't know these things. I've discussed the issue with him several times. But sometimes I choose not to discuss it, because we have different views, and it only makes things worse. Why are people against legalization? Because they're afraid this law will not guarantee them a dignified life or pay a livable wage. That's why they're scared. So they'd rather stay illegal. Hold on a sec. Marijuana is being legalized in Morocco? Yes, but just for industrial, cosmetic and medicinal uses, at least at first. The Moroccan Interior Ministry is expecting that by 2028, annual revenues from the European market alone will reach up to $630 million. 
The law, passed by the Moroccan government in May 2021, is aiming to limit illegal trade and help improve farmers' incomes. Farming communities are worried that they're being left behind and are afraid of competition from powerful investors. This has led to serious tension between Mohammed's and his father's generations. Perhaps pressure on those evading the law will increase. I'm not against that. Just fewer regions. It's important. We wanted to limit the amount of regions. Okay, we could agree with those three regions. But what were our demands? Tema, Isegen, and Beni Khalid were chosen because those are the cannabis regions. But unfortunately, Al Husayma, Shawin, and Taunet were added to the list. <laughs> My name is Monet Schultz. I'm 26 years old. My beautiful daughter, Monet. My name is Stacia Jacobs Canterbury. I love her so much. I grew up in Georgetown, Guyana. Which is a beautiful country. I am um, a migrant and I live in Far Rockaway, Queens, New York. I really love living in Far Rockaway. Even though there were a few devastating things that happened in Far Rockaway that it tore a part of me. With the smoke inside outside of the house, I left it there because that's me of myself talking to my children. One day I just looked at it and I was like, Mom, like, should we take this down? And she was like, no, absolutely not. This is going to stay right here because this is what my rules are. You all just break them. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to smoke on my balcony, but I just, you know, I stay out of the common areas <laughs> and sometimes the smell does seep into her uh, quarters and she does like m say her comments, oh, you're going to be lazy, you're going to be this if you keep smoking. Uh, here she goes with this stuff again, and, and then she's make me have a heart attack, I'm going to fall down, she's going to stress me out, and I'm just like... This is so dramatic. When it comes to marijuana and cannabis within your loved ones and your kids, you want to keep them away from prison. That's number one. Prison? Yeah, marijuana still isn't legal in all of the US. Around half of the 50 states have legalized recreational cannabis use. In March 2021, New York also joined the Legalization Club with the hopes of bringing justice and equality to African Americans and other minorities, whose communities were torn apart by the old system. In just a couple of years, the yearly tax revenues of legalized marijuana are expected to be around 95 million US dollars. And in a few more years, four times even that. But legalization does nothing to change Stacia's worries, however. Then they will not be able to have the kind of life that they're supposed to. Being someone coming out of prison because of that, you'll be looked at differently. The other fear is that they develop mental illness. I was still worried when we decided to migrate to this country, and I always try to talk to my kids, have them understand the is and the buts. I think coming from Guyana to the United States and seeing the way historically like the police has interacted with black communities, I think she saw cannabis as like one of those factors that would surely lead us into the hands of, you know, either the crack house or the jail system, you know, right into to prison. <laughs> The city of Tetuan is on the Moroccan-Spanish border, and the stereotype is that it's a smuggler city, especially for food and drugs. It's the heart of our region, because it's where the young people from Isagan study. I worked as a journalist and founded the Journalism Institute, where I also work as a lecturer. It's the only institute of its kind in the north. My goal was to change the stereotype of northern towns being known as smuggler towns. Where does this cliché actually come from? Well, Moroccan authorities seized more than 250 metric tons of hash in 2020. And in the same year, Spanish authorities seized about 450 metric tons. 
In spite of the strict ban on growing weed for recreational consumption in Morocco, demand in national, regional and European markets is crazy high. In 2003, 70% of all hash in the EU came from Morocco. Luxem J is my baby. The MJ stands for Marijuana Justice, um, and Lux MJ is an ancillary business which deals with uh, grinders and trays and holders, and they're also equipped with a, a Know Your Rights Fact sheet, so folks are not being recriminalized under the legalization of marijuana. And then the other piece is the equity and advocacy, and that comes through the collective. Talking about the effect of the war on drugs, you cannot forget the impact um, on the families of those incarcerated, particularly what happened with women in those households. Not only were they also incarcerated, but they were also the ones left to pick up the pieces when uh, the men in their family were targeted specifically for um, cannabis use. After graduating high school, I studied law in Fes. There I met other young students from my region, and we formed our own group. We discussed local issues, lack of development, the marginalization. And out of university, we created an association, the Association of Youth for Sagan's Future. I told him not to confront the big men of the region. If you want to do something, don't do it here. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in a lot of trouble. Powerful people say what the younger ones are doing is going to ruin us. From the beginning, it was obvious to our organization that cannabis is a big problem for our region. That's why we all agreed that legalization was the solution. Okay, mom, pick up the phone. She's good now. She's there. Kenny has other people to talk to. She's a very popular old lady. All right, now I have to call her in her cell. Mm -hmm. Stay, don't move. Come on, mom. Now you see how it feels when I call you and you don't answer. I don't know. I told her I'm going to call you. Hello? Good morning, Mother. How are you? Okay, I'll just come out of the bathroom. Yes. All right, Mom. Um, the stigma about the cannabis, is it different from then to now? How do you feel about the stigma? Oh, shit. My cousin used to sell weed and would smoke weed, and they were like the rapper environment, so I always thought it was like so cool how people can come together and laugh and smoke, and just like, it felt very positive in those environments. Like, it was not tense, it was so relaxed. I loved him dearly. <laughs> I literally fight with him every day about it. Granny has always been opinionated and has always been very outwardly disapproving of weed and cannabis and marijuana when Quinson was alive like that was that was the only thing you could really say that was you know what they didn't like about him yeah because i think that's why um quinton had um did not responded in the way because we did disapprove everybody, yeah, everybody. was on him and yeah. because he was the only person exactly everybody was on him you guys everybody were very harsh and judgmental it was very hard and there are times that you know i had to you know perform corporate punishment on him because i wanted him to to continue doing the best. Um, he could not have understand. Your other cousin could not have understand. You, you, none of you could not have understand why we were doing it. It was very hurtful. And I can't talk. I was angry at my, you know, community for a little bit because, you know. I wish that never happened. Never. I just felt like, you know, he didn't have to, he didn't have to go that way. 
and it didn't have to be that way? The way he, they did it, God knows, it was not right. When I got to that spot and I saw they were there and they told me, you can't go. I said, no, I will have to go and see my nephew. Let me go. Let me go. Just for one time, just let me hold him. I also kind of felt connected to him when I would smoke and like be back in cannabis because like those are the memories that I had of him, of him being happy and with his friends and listening to music and smoking. And you know, even though my family didn't really like that about him, that was where he found the most joy. But it's okay. It's still okay. Because that's what I live. That keeps me going. And every time I pass the area in the Far Rock way, I said, this is my nephew's. This is where his last soul lie. And that is part of me. I spent my childhood in the mountains. It was beautiful. What's interesting here in Isagan is that all the families in this part of the Reef Mountains live from growing cannabis. Where did the cannabis come from? I don't know. I haven't known anything else. My parents always grew cannabis. At that time, there was just a barter economy. Currency wasn't necessary. People just exchanged cannabis for things like potatoes or goods from other markets. The farmers used to sell their bushels of marijuana at the market. My father grew up in the 70s and 80s, during the hippie era. There were also plenty of tourists who came to discover cannabis for themselves. The wave of hippies had a big influence on my father's generation. It changed their lives. They didn't influence us back then, but there were lots of things we learned from them. My father's look at that time. I had long hair and wore bell bottoms. That was trendy back then. Things were different back then. Both the product and the seeds were original, from the region. But now they've introduced Pakistani varieties, critical, amnesia, and so many others. The introduction of genetically modified plants has had a 100% negative effect on the region, causing environmental and economic crises. Smoking this new variety is kind of like taking hard drugs the kinds we used to fear, like heroin or LSD. People on LSD go crazy. You don't want to get too close to them. But it's not like that with local cannabis. It calms you way down. If you need to do something, you do it. And if not, you just sit there so calmly. All you want is peace. Hello? Hello, Hello, Father. How are you? Good. And you? I'll be there in a moment. Where are you? At Hajj Muhammad. I'll be there in five minutes. Okay, see you then. How was that? Hajj Muhammad is a local. The family lived abroad, and he and his brother would come here in the summer. At that time, I was about 10, and they were 18 or 20 years old. They're from this area. He's one of us. Of color. 
even more importantly, like black women election lawyers. I think when it comes to me being, you know, a petite, seemingly non-threatening individual and me revealing that I smoke, for most people it's like, oh, okay, that, like, that's very cute, that's very dainty, you know, she speaks well, she's smart, she's graduated, she has intelligence, all these things. Whereas for my brother, he's like six foot, dark-skinned male, tattoos, so he fits the description for people to be afraid of him. He fits the description for the police. He has to have a different level of responsibility and heightened awareness when he's in that world versus myself because, you know, I'm just like, I'm the cool chick that you want to like, you want to smoke with me, you want to hang out with me. But for him, it can come off a lot more threatening. There's a huge mistrust in government in black and brown communities for very, very good reason. For our community, it looks like, you know, fear. Fear and mistrust, especially when we're talking about marijuana. Even though studies show that white and black people in the US consume in approximately equal amounts, black people are four times as likely to be imprisoned for using marijuana. In 2021, 96% of cannabis arrests by New York police involved people of color. Because they're just so worried about all of the factors that are just already placed on them before they already, you know, open their mouth. You were in a constant state of fear, as if you were a criminal, and lived like you always had one foot in jail. Whenever you left the region, you were branded as a ktemi, a drug dealer and a bandit, even though farmers had nothing to do with any of that. That's enough. We've been suffering since 1956. Your generation was asleep and now we pay the price. <laughs> no, no, to the contrary. We weren't asleep. You were asleep and we're paying for it now. We couldn't do anything. What could we have done? Back then, giving your honest opinion and speaking the truth, they'd have prosecuted you and wrongfully thrown you in prison. I'm one of them. I unjustly spent seven months in prison. He hasn't cultivated his land at all. Not for years. They burned my forest, my trees. Right over here. They burned it all. You never demanded legalization like we have. That's why we asked for an alternative. An alternative or a solution. An alternative and a solution. There was fierce resistance. People were against legalization. They'd say, stop, don't talk about it. It's not allowed. There was fear. You should trust young people more and give them a chance. No one trusts or motivates the young people. Exactly. I do agree with you on that point. This new law will be beneficial for both the state and the people. I think medicinal usage is good. For me, freedom is better. It's incomparable. Why would I choose a way of life that's forbidden and go to jail for it? All your life, no matter where you go, being accused of being a criminal, when you're just a farmer. After so much discussion and back and forth, he's now about 60 to 70 percent in favor of legalization. When I found out that my daughter and my son were using it as a recreation drug, is that I, I did not know because I guess they didn't want to hurt my feelings because they knew that I'm very much against it. At the end of 2018, that's the, you, the end of the year. That's how you know? Yes. That's how long I was so naive and stupid. And somebody's clearing the truth because I understand that it was longer. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs>
She thought that I influenced you to start smoking in college. I've been smoking since I was 13 years old. Jesus Christ. I started smoking at 16, though. Jesus. Hmm. So, but not like regularly. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> it's, it is a it's lot jarring. to swallow. Yes, it is. <laughs> The most I can do is follow my saliva. You guys are so... Are you mad now? Not really mad, but just... Do you feel scared? A little betrayed. You feel betrayed? Yeah, by the two of you guys. You guys have been there. Mm -hmm. From the age of baby until now, to know that that's something that I disagree with. Can I say... And no, no, stop. Let me talk. Why would y'all go behind my back <laughs> knowing that I fight with everybody else as my own, bringing them up from baby to now? And now I feel as though I was hypocrite to my nephews that I fight to stay in order and you guys go behind my back. And that's something I, would, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take out of my mind until I die because I'm going to tell you guys about it because y'all betrayed me, oh knowing that gosh. I did not <laughs> like see, it. See, no, no, no. See, the difference between being betrayed and feeling betrayed is exactly. the Thank action. You. Nobody you. betrayed you. You That's felt exactly. betrayed. You thought, I know. So what do you How many mean? hours like, a week you thought you spent say? with us? No, but you know, you remember, you know that even though I work, but right, yes, Mom. I still used to look and no, make sure. No, Mom, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know why? Because you were busy trying to make sure that we survived, which we are very grateful it for. It was fine. It that's was fine. Yes. That is why y'all should have stayed in my But that's why we smoked weed. Is that that's going... why we smoked you... weed is what I'm trying to tell you. We found healing from trauma, right? Like real life trauma that comes with migrating to a new place at a certain age in a new environment you know, in a different type of like familial environment where you're working not at home the way you were in Guyana. So it's a different world here. The, the part that really, really, really hurt is it's that the 13, yeah. the 13 and the 16. The reason why I started smoking weed when I was 13 was because I was alone. Yeah. I always felt alone. I was always the middle child and that's always it's what true. it's been. Mm -hmm. So I used way. weed to help me be yeah. in myself, like it helped me be comfortable with being in my so, head because that's yeah. where I was most of the time. Where we did it just go wanted wrong? to smoke it didn't go weed. Wrong. We it didn't go it's wrong. not wrong. That's the problem. Is you who's to say that you, wrong. even if you were in my life, who's to say I wouldn't have started smoking weed? I would have still smoked weed. I like I, smoking weed. I like. Maybe I you should try it. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> so why would you think that I would try it? Because we like it. Yeah, no, there's no, a lot no, of people no, that like it. Let me say this. No, stop. It surprised me a great lot because I never knew that really, really. <laughs> it, I felt a in my stomach. It, it was like a little purse. And I thought about it, and I really understood because he was I the only male within his sister, his cousin. I can understand he felt alone because his dad was not. He's there but he is not living with us. I'm praying every day that he get past it, because I love him dearly. And I know he can, he's strong enough to do it. To accept it, oh wow. Majidu is my youngest. And I chose the name Abdel Majid. My other kids chose his name. My father was against it. He had other suggestions. My mother, too, said, one Abdel Majid is enough for me, and now there's another one? There's a 20-year difference between Majid and I, and 20 years is a lifetime. His generation is different from mine. It's another time. And my relationship with him is more than that between brothers. He's like a son. It's important to me that my brother knows what I've been doing in Fes. It'll be useful for him. Tell me, Mjidu, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a university professor and teach medicine. 
University professor, you'll have to study hard. I'll keep on going until I finish my dissertation. The university's medical faculty is in charge of analyzing cannabis so it can be used as medication. Would you be interested in that kind of research? No, not really. Why not? Cannabis isn't my thing. <laughs> and do you want cannabis to stay in a Sagan? It should stay until they find a permanent alternative. We'll be by their side all the way to the end. I want people from our region to be able to show their IDs without fear and say proudly, I am Ketemi. Cannabis can be a resurrecting or restoring factor for particularly communities that are in cities, inner cities, that are experiencing high levels of gun violence. I feel confident and comfortable that I'm getting better in life when it comes to cannabis and marijuana use. If they can see honest engagement in the cannabis industry, I think that there is an opportunity to build back those communities in ways that are productive. Even my grandma says things like, oh, okay, well, maybe the weed is not that bad, you know? Before there was no maybes, ifs, ants, or buts. It was just strictly, this is how I feel, this is my position, and there is nothing you can say or do about it. It's not my choice when it comes to the cannabis business because I am not a cannabis person. But as time goes by, I develop the comfort and as the laws change, my comfort becomes more. And I will support her as much as I can to work towards her goal. Her thing is, if me or my brother makes it onto like a large platform or a big thing, then she will smoke with us. No, we will never see Stashi using it, never. Stashi will never use that, nope. Oh, and the glasses, do you want me to take the glasses off? My memory's giving out. I couldn't remember everything. <laughs> if you want me to repeat that again, forget it. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs>